Right guys, so <clears throat> I'm going to do a quick video on uh, dampers, um, sim racing. Um, <clears throat> I just happen to be an ACC. Um, the reason is because uh, this is my, um, I suppose it's the sim I'm most experienced in, and I actually have a setup on the car right now that uh, is delivering quite good lap time. Um, now, this is the Lamborghini Huracan. I do drive the uh, McLaren um, in this uh, sim in a league, but I will be changing into the Lamborghini next season which is we, we've one race left uh, next week basically then we have a week off season event and then we're straight back into the uh, into the new league and yeah I'll be taking the Lamborghini Huracan uh, Evo 2 in that one so what do dampers do um, so we're, we're going to jump on track in a minute and we're going to see this in action right but think of a damper um, as how quickly the suspension is allowed to compress which is the the, the bump or the, the bound damping, as sometimes it's called. Uh, the fast bump is the same thing, but just for high frequency speed. So think of like hitting curbs, stuff like that. But I want you just to think in terms of slow uh, slow damping initially, right? So you have the, the spring of the car, the, the suspension, the spring rate, but when that compresses or how much it compresses by is controlled by the damper. Okay, so think of the damper as controlling the weight shift under braking and acceleration. So the braking will be the car pitching forward so the nose goes down the rear comes up what happens well the weight shifts forward naturally in that situation but also as the nose pitches down it's also going to increase the aero load on the front because now that's lower to the ground relative to the rear and because the rear comes up the diffuser is now raised off the ground so there's less ground effect from the downforce at the rear so there's those two things to um to to, to keep in mind um the rebound damping is how quickly the suspension wants to come back to its natural position. Um, so think of it like this. You're on the brakes going into, let's say, Maggots Beckett's at Silverstone. Um, as you're going in, you're bleeding off speed um, into the tight right before going onto the hanger straight, that left-hander. Um, so question is, do you want the front of the car to stay down, pitch down that bit longer from the braking? Or do you want the car to return back to neutral quickly in order to get, let's say, more rear traction? Um, so we're going to have a look at this. I'm, I'm going to set it up as an, an, an extreme. So on the front, now, I have, a, I have a setup on the car that is quite good. I've zeroed out the dampers purposely, right? So I'm going to, going to go with bump damping at its lowest. So this is going to allow the suspension to compress. And I'm going to keep it compressed. I'm going to keep the rebound um, at a very low rate. So when the front compresses, I want to keep it down. So we're going to go into a corner, front will pitch down, and I want it to stay there for as long as possible, right? That's going to keep a lot of aero over the front of the car. And I would expect we're going to get oversteer um, on corner entry because there's just no pitch control of the car aerodynamically um, as we go into it. Rebound on the rear. <clears throat> well, what is that exactly? So as the front goes down, how quickly do I want the rear to raise with it? So the front, if you can imagine, will dip down. But what about the rear? If you can imagine the rear coming up and we want to try to control that. Let, here, here, here's a phone that this might, you know. So let's imagine we are driving along toward the corner, front goes down, but the rear will also want to come up. And what the rebound does is basically how quick that happens. The lower the number, the less rebound damping is there, the quicker the rear will come up. So as this car is now, um, it's going to behave like a pogo stick. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave all of the dampers at zero. Um, and the, the, so, so what we're going to have, the, the front is going to dip down, the rebound at the rear, it's going to be allowed to come up. And I'm just going to put moderate damping um, on the rear, just middle kind of numbers, just to give the uh, rear shock some kind of meat to deal with on the compression side but i want it to be floaty and stuff um on the on the rebound and on, on the rebound actually you may have noticed if the bump being at zero lets the thing compress completely then i want it to stay there in which case then i increase the rebound and i'm going to do it on both sides to low and high frequency so that's going to keep the nose of the car uh, buried um to the ground as we get on the brakes into uh in, into the corner so, um, <clears throat> fuel load is uh, quite low. Yeah, just got my 13 litres, basic stuff. 
and uh, yeah let's go for it um if we get through the first corner at the bottom of the hill here we'll be doing well um this is quite an extreme setup so let's uh let's go for it tracks clear push 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 already i can feel the front of the car wanting to dig in a little but let's see how we get on Alrighty. Yellow flag. So uh, yeah, that was expected. Let's um, let's do the next corner. And I picked Alton Park by the way because this track has a lot of uh, kind of corners that you come in on the brakes, which will really highlight what we're dealing with here. So it's mainly going to be a problem in high speed braking areas that comes into a corner. And there's just no real stability on the front of the car. Um, it just feels, you know, very wavy, very, you know. And there you can see, it just wants to over rotate on corner entry. There you can see again. So I'm kind of presenting the car to the corner as I normally would, but the setup is off, the balance is off. And this is um, sometimes what people believe as well, like particularly people that are, and there we go, oh shit. Yeah. And sometimes what people believe is that the more okay, aggressive, lots of front locking. the more aggressive the setup is, the more, um, or the quicker you're gonna be, like the typical alien type setups but as you can see there that as the weight pitched forward the car just lost the rear completely um we got through the next couple of corners because there wasn't as much weight shift going on here there was no braking and to be fair i didn't adjust the bump stops so there is going to be some limit in terms of how much movement um but still there is a there is also a limit as to how much pitch you can put through the car regardless and again this uh, next corner coming up um watch the rear of the car just break away there we go so you can see there that i begin to break and slowly begin to turn in and you know before we even get to the apex the rear has snapped and uh, we're probably into opposite lock um yeah half a second later or whatever so you get the idea it's basically um the the, the 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 low amount of bump or bound stamping on the front is allowing the car to uh, compress basically into braking areas a lot of pitch and keep it there now uh, conversely um let's do the opposite let us uh, make the rear soft uh, the rear rebound so basically when we accelerate or any time the rear suspension uh, compresses i want to keep it there okay so i want to maximize the rebound value and what that does is it means the 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 rebound the damping in relation to the rebound so if this if the shock absorber is to uncompress like this if i have nothing damping or sorry if i have no damping applied to the uh the the let's say the rebound it's going to pop back up like that if i have damping i'm slowing it down because i'm damping that movement i'm, I'm making it very very slow and what that does is that will keep the rear of the car planted for you know as much as possible <clears throat> and will um, increase uh, mechanical grip at the rear um, and for this i'm going to slacken off the bound or the bump damping because i want the rear suspension to compress freely and easily and stay there and now i'm going to go the opposite i'm going to maximize the compression damping um on the front or the bump and once that is um once that's done then um in terms of rebound I want the suspension basically to come back like a pogo stick um really and easily um so yeah let, let's let's go ahead with that and see what difference that makes and i expect a I expect a lot of a lot of understeer here um and i would also say that um try as i might i probably won't lose on the brakes into any of these corners but let's go ahead and uh, see Okay, very, very stable. No hint of correction on the brakes whatsoever. We may get a bit of push under steer in this high speed corner. Yeah, it's pushing, see? 
and there we go pushing wide again there's no threat whatsoever um, of the rear snapping out on this under brakes or into high medium speed very very stable now it's that corner in section three is what we're going to be looking at um, and i'm not too bothered about lap time here by the way i'm just kind of doing this to let's say demonstrate um, how dampers will behave um, on their own. Now this would be tuned with suspension uh, suspension springs and I would say go for like a medium to lowish value for most tracks in ACC, particularly this one. Um, but anyway, we're coming into another high speed kind of braking area. Um, last time we lost it completely. This time much, much more stable. Just a smidgen hint on the way in, but you know, all things considered the car is very very stable and there you can see it again just pushing um as we go in and essentially what that is is that as we brake and the car wants to pitch down by having um stronger bump values um on the on the front of the car what that's doing essentially is it, it's slowing down that compression um and it's not allowing the the spring the suspension at the front to compress when it does compress Having the rebound at a low value allows it to spring back to its original position quickly. And the rear, the, the exact same is true. So what I use dampers for really is fine tuning the balance of the car. So if I feel the car is a bit too pitchy on the way into a corner, um, I'll make some adjustments um, up and down. You also need to take account of the track surface, right? So Alton Park, um, you know, you can bottom out on a few of the curbs. It's a very bumpy track. So not only do you want to have an adequate spring rate and set bump stops, but when you have that in place, then you, you need to control all that. Um, and what I do to control the suspension movement um, usually is the, the damper. Um, like I say, it, it, it's not the most important tool in ACC, like probably aero is. And that's not just ACC, by the way, that's nearly every racing simulator. Um, the aero balance of a car has a huge impact, particularly on any car that produces um, downforce. So anything like GT3 and higher in the motorsport world, let's say. Um, but certainly when you get into a, a nice window of operating the car, let's say the suspension feels pretty good, the car feels pretty good, there's nothing obviously wrong with it, um, and you just want to tweak the balance front and rear in terms of how it behaves on the brakes and how it behaves on throttle. Uh, like I say, setting up the dampers can give you that. Um, so yeah, guys, that's a, a damper quick stop. Um, try to keep it less than 20 minutes because I know dampers are seen as like a black art and people are like, oh, what do they do? Um, the obvious question then is, well, what if I have a stiff suspension and a soft damper or a soft suspension and a stiff damper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it doesn't really matter so much, right? So if you think of suspension typically as how much compression you'll get per meter, um, which I think I think suspensions like it, it you know, you, you know, it's force applied over distance, right? So kilograms per inch or kilograms per meter or whatever. <clears throat> and the more uh, kg that's applied, the the more meters it compresses right so it's it, 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 it can be static usually um where with the damper then it says well okay you can compress the suspension that much over x distance now and you know in a race car we're talking like millimeters or you know inches maybe um but nonetheless what the damper does is it, it controls that movement right so they, they they it works in conjunction with the spring but I would use the damper to fine tune that corner entry and exit phase, as I mentioned, in terms of balance and how you want the car to behave. Um, whereas the spring stiffness is more to do with the overall, let's say, mechanical behavior of the car. Um, but we won't get too much into that now. I'll, I'll do a separate video on uh, spring rates. And I did do a small write up on uh, gssimracing.com. Um, there's a small write up on anti roll bars. And um, spring rates, so I will add dampers into that list as well. Um, and I'll probably do videos on the same. I, I want to kind of do um, a full setup tutorial um, on cars, everything from aero to uh, camber, tow angles, um, all aero grip, basically, all mechanical grip, um, and go through them, what they mean. Um, and yeah, help you guys kind of 
you know, tweak the setups when you get them, whether you do the built-in game setups in Automobilista 2 or ACC or whatever the simulator is of your choice, um, or you take a paid setup from one of the setup shops as a starting point and want to tweak that further. Um, yeah, I mean, feel free to use this uh, and, and, and apply it. Um, I will say, um, different... I mean, I'm saying the obvious here, right? But different cars will have different natural tendencies. Um, and don't worry too much about the actual values, right? So don't worry about a car thinking, oh, well, when I have this set at 9, 15, 11, and 9, which is low, or well, low on the slider, right? Don't feel that that's wrong. Um, or if you have a car that's up at the 30s um, and believe that that's wrong. Where or what the number is doesn't really matter. Um, it's more to do with what value you need to get the behavior that you seek in the car. Um, and, you know, the Lamborghini can be anywhere from low to mid, typically, on the front. Uh, bump damping, yeah, it can change track to track, you know, like if you want to control the front downforce and stuff. And um, then you have cars like the McLaren, for example, which, you know, certainly at this point in time, feels like it prefers a higher uh, damping rate um, if you take open wheelers, formulas, or even uh, Indy cars in um, Automobilista 2, for example, um, you're often stuck between, okay, you know, strategy tells you, okay, run the car stiff to give it uh, or maintain an aero balance, particularly in high speed. But then if you go too soft or you go soft enough, um, the car will start to push down with the, the downforce. Um, but you sacrifice mechanical grip uh, by doing one and you gain mechanical grip doing the other but then cause bottoming and stuff like that um, so you can see that it becomes a dynamic kind of coin, well not a coin flip but it becomes a, a, a tug of war between okay do you seek aero stability or do you seek mechanical grip and then whichever one you put a premium on depending on the car you're driving the track you're driving and your driving style you bring that in you make the changes and like I say, small adjustments, maybe two clicks or three clicks front and rear um, together to see is the balance changing enough. Um, one final tip um, is when you're doing these changes, when you're doing these setup changes, um, and let's say you've got a, a setup that is really, really close and really, really in the zone as to what you want. Um, when you're making these changes, don't make drastic changes all at once um, and don't push the car when you're testing the changes, right? Because if you begin to try to chase lap time, um, you end up pushing. And when you end up pushing, you risk unknown to yourself, maybe overdriving a little bit. Um, and you're not really getting the, the benefit of the, the car as in, okay, it, it, is this me just on a, a really good lap? Or is it the change that I've made actually delivering the lap time? So try to be as neutral as possible. Um, when you make these changes and basically let the car tell you if that change is correct or not. Um, anyway, guys, we'll leave it there. I hope this was helpful. Um, like I say, we'll do a little mini series on setups um, over the course of the next week, maybe. Um, and let me know in the comments if there's a particular setup topic or discussion you want me to bring up and dive into. Um, be more than happy to do it. But again, guys, thanks for watching, and until the next one, cheers. No way.